Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Brain Club. I see a couple new people, which is really exciting. So I will introduce myself. I am Mel Hauser. I use she, they pronouns, and I am executive director of All Brains Belong Vermont. Welcome to Brain Club, our weekly community conversation on everyday brain like stuff. So, what I'm going to do, I'm trying this like really ridiculous situation where I'm operating two computers for two different purposes because neither one of them are working to do both. So here we go. Um, this is, this is eerie. Um, cause I'm looking at my shared screen on a different screen. So as to look at you anyway, tonight we're going to be talking about home life reimagined. Um, before though, uh, before that, we will uh, just just by way of introduction, um, all forms of participation are okay here. You you've you've probably noticed already um, that uh, this is a culture where you can have your video on or off, whatever you're comfortable with. And even if it's on, we don't expect anything of you. You know, we certainly don't expect you to look at the camera, walk, move, stim, eat, all the things. And um, everyone is welcome here at Brain Club. And um, you can communicate however you are most comfortable. You can unmute, you can type in the chat box, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, the, only, the only thing about making this an environment that is uh, safe and comfortable for everyone is that in addition to affirming all aspects of identity, um, we are all about, we've, and this is, this is new for 2023, um, we are really tr making sure to use discretion to, so as to create a safe environment for people of all ages. So we just ask you to use your discretion with, with language and topics. Um, because this is, um, we want we want everyone to be able to be comfortable. And as a reminder, this is general education. Um, this is not um, medical or, or therapeutic. So um, individual traumatic experiences are best processed with a trained therapist outside of Brain Club. Um, last bit of access need um, updates is that um, it uh, closed captioning is enabled, but to toggle it on, if you'd like to use it, depending on your version of Zoom, clicking either the live transcript CC button, or if that's not present, the more dot, 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 and choose show subtitles or add subtitles if you would like to turn them off. All right, so all month long, we, because you know, all, all year long in 2022, we've been talking about how, how things need reimagining. Um, and uh, now we're going to start talking about some practical, uh, uh, you know, practical strategies for how to how to how to do that. What does it look like? And so last last week, if you missed it, we talked about like New Year. Um, let's you know, unlearning the brain rules of New Year's resolutions and all that. Um, but really, what is what is what is a, an authentic twenty twenty three going to look like? And so uh, this this is uh, the next step of this conversation. Um, because as we've been talking about since the beginning of uh, all brains, since, since all brains belongs inception, to do anything for the neurodivergent community, we have to do everything. Because it's not just healthcare; it's it's employment, it's education, it's social isolation. So uh, that's why we we take all of it on. And so um, as we think about home life and all the various domains of what that means, whether you are, you know, regardless of what your home life looked like, um, hopefully this will be something, something applicable to things on your mind. Um, uh, but before we get into that, I want to give one more piece of update is that amazing news. I think by the end of today, we're going to hit $22,000 in the reimagining what's possible campaign. So we're very, very excited about this. Um, and uh, for those, those who are new to this, um, thanks to a generous donation from a community member um, uh, matching $25,000. As soon as we hit $25,000, it magically becomes $50,000. Um, and all of this goes to expanding access to life-changing neurodiversity, affirming healthcare and community connection. So we're gonna talk about doing the thing. We talk a lot about not doing the thing and how part of life reimagined is to kind of zoom out and say, am I doing 
what honors my access needs or am I doing things to comply with the rules of an environment that not only don't serve me, but hurt me. And when, when, uh, when I think about my five-year-old, I have a five-year-old who um, I think is a magical uh, representation of, of what unfettered autonomy looks like. Luna genuinely believes that if she doesn't want to do the thing, she does not do the thing. And I'm, so the other day I said, Luna, sometimes we have to do the thing. Um, and she says, why would I pop? Why would I do the thing? Why would I do the thing if I don't want to do the thing? And I said, well, Luna, sometimes things are not optional. You just got to do the thing. You got to like stop at the red light. You got to pay your taxes. You got to ask consent. These are the world rules. They are not optional. But sometimes we do things anyway, even if they are optional. They have benefit to me, you know, direct or indirect, it's worth it. And sometimes I want to do the thing. Sometimes the thing is hard. And it's hard to do the thing, but I want to do the thing. And that's where adaptations, accommodations, asking for help, approaching it a different way, thinking about what are the barriers to access and can we reduce those things? Um, and I wanted to begin with this before I'm going to play a, um, a, a, a pre-recorded interview with Lizzie Peratt, who is our new educational programs coordinator. Um, so uh, as, 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 as an asynchronous uh, panelist today, I'm going to play this video, but, but I, um, it's about, I think it's about 15, 17 minutes, I think is what it comes down to. And we'll get the, we'll have the chat box going while we're playing. Um, but I just kind of wanted to wanted to start with this because I think that anytime we've talked about life reimagined, one of the questions that comes up from the audience 100% of the time in Brain Club is, what do you mean you just don't do the thing? So I think it's not about not doing the thing. It's about reimagining what things you do and how you do them. So with that, I will stop sharing from screen number one and start sharing from screen number two. So complicated. All right. Um, one of the things that I've learned from you is like energy management and conservation. I think that is part of my life reimagined like i just do all the things until i can't do anything anymore and like it's just like the yo-yo it's i've done that my whole life mm -hmm. um it just seems like maybe i don't have to do that like how'd you learn about that how'd you start doing that um well i basically just like the main thing I did is I just like listen to my body and like really listen to my body internally and like just like sat with how my body's feeling. Not like I sat in meditation or anything because I don't do that, but um, I just, and not that I really even like had like reminders to check in with my body because that's kind of stressful for me too but um I I kind of just would maybe ask myself like once a day like as the day's going on like how do I feel and then I would see what my body says and I would also like check in like sensory wise how my body's feeling like that's a big one and I try to notice like when like littler things are impacting me more you know mm -hmm. in my environment and then like figuring out like ways i can meet my sensory needs too that was a big thing mm. and just realizing like okay i want to like meet my sensory needs like more proactively and also realizing that my body doesn't have to do the yo-yo thing because like i totally like did the yo-yo thing for like ever and I also thought about 
like do I, how do I want my body to feel for like the rest of my life? Like, do I want Ooh. to do the yoga thing? Like, you know, 20 years from now, do I want to do the yo-yo thing? Cause it doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't feel good like at all. It feels like really awful. And so then I decided that I didn't want my body to feel awful all the time. So what are ways that I could be compassionate to myself? Cause that's like kind of like my starting point of like having more self-compassion for myself i think just like listening to my body like that's what i've been trying to to have is more self-compassion in the past year and i guess that's one of the ways i started doing it like kind of unintentionally i just i didn't really read very much or i mean i've read into things but i like reading but that's just kind of like my own way I figured it out I guess on my own just listening to my body that's amazing that's amazing that sense, yeah um Luna like she'll just walk around and be like my body needs this or like my body really just like doesn't like this I'm like great let's get out of this environment you know like just that I mean that language is just it's amazing to hear a five-year-old just like doing the things that I'm only now learning like yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Like definitely. I think that is amazing. Like that she's listening to her intuition and like, I'm just starting to do that now. Like, I agree. Like just to have that, like confidence, like in your intuition and like, and that you don't try to silence it either, you know? Right, right. Oh. Yeah, that's like amazing that she can do that. Yeah. Um, when I remember like as a little kid, like sometimes when I would do the yo-yo and I would just like crash and my mom was always like, when are you gonna do the thing? Like it was, it was like actively like rest was so discouraged. Mm -hmm. It was like you idling. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't rest by rest's name was discouraged. It was idling, not being busy, not being productive. And like, when you grow up in that, in that vein, like, it's just, it's, it's a lot of unlearning. So people are like, oh, you know, slow down, you know, be present. And like, I never, that's not what really drives me. I think it's more what you said, which is like, I don't want to feel awful anymore that that i'm yeah. not like looking for like self you know like you know it, it's it's when you're like in the trenches and you're dysregulated i think when people kind of hear other people talking about you know like enlightenment and self-actualization and like something um it just feels like so lofty like such a gap between that and like where someone is in the trenches but I think it's about, all right, this feels awful. How can we feel a little bit less awful? Yeah. Oh, so what does that look like? Does that let, does that mean like I rest? Does that mean that I don't push through to do the thing? Does that mean I don't cortically override my limbic system? You know, what is, what does that mean? It could be like, you know, some micro thing that just gets at, you know, like, like for me, like right now, I am supposed to finish writing my progress notes. That's the thing that I'm supposed to do in the got to do the thing. I already know how terrible it feels to stay up late and do the thing. Cause that's what I did last night. I'm just going to go to bed right now because life reimagined yeah. there's a lot of time to do the thing yeah. and the thing will get done it just it's like luna says good enough mama bear i think like parenting our kids like we're letting them be unapologetically themselves and unapologetically shine and not feel squashed and and 
we're celebrating them for who they're meant to be and we're celebrating all their magic every day in the little things you know that are easily easily easy to overlook totally and you you often can't even notice the little things when you're still stuck in the old paradigm of i have to do the thing like i think that for me that's what home life reimagined is it's like i don't actually have to do the thing like i just don't do the thing sometimes like it's kind of like when i posted what my toilet and dishes and laundry looked like on instagram like that's what they look like because can't actually do all the things so i just don't and i want luna to it was actually interesting so luna said to me today she says like her new her her her, her mantra and it's like it's very it's 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 automatic speech but it's like also like a life motto of i do what i want <laughs> and <laughs> and um <laughs> And I was like, dude, sometimes you got to do the thing. And she says, perfectly straight face. She says, mama, you don't have to do the thing. I, I, I agree with Luna. You know, that's what I'm realizing. Like, you don't have to do the thing, you know, like maybe you don't do the thing. And then maybe you have spoons and you pair the thing with some type of play. Like I pair a lot of play to things in my life. Like um, what? That's something my husband taught me. Like, like I blast Disney music now, like really loud, you know, and like danced around tidying my house, <laughs> you know? Um, but I, I, I think, I think Luna's mantra of you don't have to do the thing. Like it's true. Like, you like I, I i'm also like okay now with letting more things go and like stepping into peace and realizing that it's my, my peace is one of the most most important things i can protect and that changes like the whole home environment and i think that gives confidence to our kids too totally because i'm like peace is with like like it's within you like it's your energy yeah like and it's, it's interesting and and you know sometimes and like i know this intellectually but in the moment i like still sometimes feel like i have to do the thing so even something like i mean i could say like yeah i didn't clean the toilet but i do feel like i have to do the thing where it's like well luna has to take her medicine in the morning and so what do we do we start every day with a battle of like take your medicine 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 and like ah pda like uh, like it's like when i want her to do the thing she can't do the thing because that's just how hypersensitive neuroception is like you don't get to pick right so i tried on the idea of like all right well what would happen if she didn't take her medicine well i mean three days later like we notice but let's not think three days from now Mm -hmm. what's gonna happen today if she doesn't make her medicine well, we'll probably be okay right so yeah. i'm just i'm gonna not do the thing and it just starts the day differently Definitely. um and so like she didn't make her medicine today i mean i really think she needs to take her medicine tomorrow but i'm gonna just not start the day with a battle mm -hmm. because it's kind of like the like the hannah bloom brain club in October, where we talked about how sometimes you have to pick, like, so if I have to pick between the relationship, the energy, the safety of the relationship and the thing, I'm going to choose the relationship every time. Yeah, definitely. That's the most important thing. I think what's going to happen is I think people in the brain club audience, I think they're going to be like, you have to do the thing. What do you mean? You say just you don't have to do the thing. You don't do the thing unless you want to do the thing. 
there's I think some of the the like even let's take school so like Scott's like what do you mean you're not sending her to school like she's gotta go to school I'm like Well, she has to learn to read. I was like, she should probably learn to read. Like, but like to battle about it? That doesn't, you know, the relationship comes first. Yeah, I mean, is, yeah, I really would like her to have a way of expressing herself. Um, and, you know, at five years old, I whipped out the Pages app on the iPad and she talks and it transcribes like okay that's gonna that's like just it's it's brain rules that there's like one right way to learn to do the thing and you do it in this order and we will battle and slog through in the trenches because that's what you do productivity with um growing up like is like huge you know for my mom and like coming out of that culture it's like a lot of unlearning and um and, and i agree like you know i've heard the messages of oh like be more present slow down it's like that stuff didn't like i didn't really connect with like i've heard that for like years and thought okay like that's great but i don't know it didn't do a lot for me but but yeah just being in the body when when i've been cultivating the past year of like not feeling awful like I didn't make it a big like lofty goal or resolution or intention or anything and I think that's what's helped me stick with it yeah well, that's very like, interesting because I didn't like shame myself into trying to be more compassionate with myself or anything, you know, I just kind of like, let it like flow. Did you like forget along the way and like slip back yeah. into the old way? Oh, yeah. 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 And then I would remember, oh yeah, this is what awful feels like. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was in a flow, like feeling awful, then feeling okay. Then feeling awful, feeling awful. <laughs> feeling awful right for a few weeks then be like oh yeah there's another way I can feel I can feel okay maybe I should try that again and not mm -hmm. like pressuring myself shaming myself feeling like I had to like get there and like arrive and or and, and also not putting the pressure on myself to feel like I had to be like the picture of what I want a mama to look like for my for my kids mm -hmm. You know. the brain rules the brain rules of like this thing even internal like internal things mm -hmm. yeah i gotta be calm mm -hmm. i gotta be peaceful i gotta be i gotta feel this and be this like like i think the um you know like you say being in your body like when you think about interoception differences when you like you know necessarily feel your body like that makes it hard Definitely. um so that's not the only way like for me i think that i know that's not my strength um so much like luna was taught at each three because like we found that when she'd go out and in, in the cold she wouldn't feel cold mm -hmm. and yet she'd start flipping her lid because she was cold, she just didn't know it was cold. Mm -hmm. So we like, we learned like visual checkpoints, you know, like when you look down and your fingers are red, you know, you might be cold. Um, it's on the differential at least. Um, or um, uh, one time, one time she was, she was maybe like a little bit, maybe she was four um, and, and she says, my legs don't work and what was it my legs don't hurt and my tummy is warm 
I think that's called hunger. She's like, oh, that's new information. But like, that's how she learned that. It's like the other thing, the things that she does feel, what's the sign? So like, my new sign is, again, with my new computer that doesn't work, it's harder to show you like the array, except I definitely should like make it a, I should definitely make a reel out of my desk right now. This is like full out autistic burnout, this desk. This desk is out of control. Anyway, so like that is, this desk is a visual checkpoint for me of like, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You can't do all the things. You know, like, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of like home life and work life there's so much overlap there, but everyone has to be on board. You know, like you can't be in a workplace culture where you walk around being like, good enough, mama bear. And everyone else is like doing the thing because mm -hmm. I mean, you can be on your path to enlightenment. You could also get fired, you know, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> um, but you know, um, it's, but, but, but even worse, Worse is being shamed. Worse of being shamed of like, you're lazy, you don't care, you're self, you know, you're self-absorbed, you only think about yourself, you're not thinking about the organization, you're not thinking about the, you know, the the stakeholders. Or it's like none of that was true. It was really just I was trying to feel okay. I was trying to feel okay. I was yeah. just but when that's not in the culture it's very easy to internalize the messages that there's something wrong with you for being selfish and being too much and yeah. all of that. And it's so, so yeah, I just knocked something over. Um, so I wonder, I, I wonder if anything stood out for, for anyone. Um, in terms of what makes it hard? What makes it hard? Oh, okay, Angie sharing. Um, it's okay to do a little bit towards a goal. Yeah, I found that really interesting. That also of like, it's of, 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 um, it's not like I read a thing, I learn a thing, I have the ideal, and then I do that. Because in many ways, that's part of yo yo. Like anytime, oh yeah, well, I'm going to do the thing where I honor my access needs and well, I'm going to do it all the time. And then I'm not going to do it at all. It's like all or nothing is kind of part of the yo-yo in a way that's not, not always helpful. I wonder if for anyone who has been dabbling in reimagining life, what has it been like? What have you noticed um, of the consequences of like just kind of zooming out and questioning some of the some of the brain rules? I had a recent experience I can share. Um, my parents came to visit this over the holidays. I feel like the holidays is a really good time to reevaluate your your uh, home life structure. <laughs> so um, they're kind of like old school and such that they like kind of have expectations of how children will behave, which I don't ascribe to. Um, so one of the things that I don't require my children to do is to um, continuously socialize with guests that are at my house. Um, I don't tell them their need to stay around um and so when my parents come they expect my children to kind of be present in the room the whole time but my kids are so used to me just like they just go to their rooms when they feel like they need to because that's what they need they need to like introvert and recalibrate and stuff so it was like every time my kids would disappear even if my parents weren't interacting with my dad was like where, where are they going? And I had to just be like, I don't know. They're probably going up to their rooms to like watch something or, or like listen to some music or something. And there's definitely some feedback I get from that. But um, 
I don't change how they function because it's best for them. So that's like my experience. So Christina, my response to a question like that, and you know, um, uh, we may or may not have had um, really similar discussions in my house over the holidays. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, the response to that is, oh, so, so where's she going? She's regulating. So, because it's, 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 um, I mean, that is what it is. And when, 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 when reframed, it's obviously the right thing to do. Laura. Yeah, it's, thank you. It's just making me think of like, Christina, it sounds like you're such a great parent because I feel like that's the ideal when your kids can have the space to go do all that stuff. But I feel like that it's so ironic that there's so much judgment for kids going off to regulate. And yet if they were to stay and become dysregulated, all the judgment that comes with that would be on as well. And it feels like we need to have space for kids to if they can self-regulate, isn't that the ideal? And like, if we don't let them regulate, we're going to be mad at them for the consequences of that. Yes, that, that is literally what goes on. Yes. Um, and Angie's agreeing. Um, in my opinion, it's better to set your boundaries and then take care of yourself than to bottle and blow up. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I, it, yes, I think that kind of collectively we can talk about how this reimagining, this reframing, this questioning is, is, is helpful and it's really hard. I wonder, does it, what makes it hard? Because sometimes naming that thing can make it less hard. I kind of have just like inner turmoil, you know, like I, I know that something's a brain rule versus a world rule. Well, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes I get into the argument about that. Like, well, is this like my rule? Is this my husband's rule? Is this like Vermont's rule? What am I doing here? You know, so I, I tend to just get into like these little arguments with myself and spiral and then begin living to what I perceive as somebody else's expectations. Like my expectations are freaking off the table at that point. Like, because I can't, I can't even, right? <laughs> at that point, it just becomes what I perceive I am expected to be doing. And, you know, since becoming a homeschooling parent and not working like I feel like home and work and family have just kind of made this like ball that I am not quite sure how to play with it anymore like now I just kind of look at it and feel like I'm not doing what I need to be doing and then my poor kid is like I don't want to do 19 worksheets and I'm like we need work samples you know <laughs> and then for like the next month I'm like yeah we can just like play Legos every day like that's fine who needs work samples you know so for me it's finding the balance of of those those cycles and just trying to shoot for that middle of like hey maybe like a work sample a week is what we should be aiming for realistically um, so I think I'm my biggest problem well I I also think that um I don't know that it's a problem right so you're basically saying I have a tendency to yo-yo because of all of the factors that have led to this. Namely, my intuition has been squashed. I've been told to power through and shamed for not powering through. Of course you lost touch with your ability to, to like know in real time whether you've gone too far or not. Of course you have, how could you not? Um, so you're yo-yoing. So what would it be like to just name the thing and teach your kids, even from a young age, this, this is a pattern. It's, you know, this is a thing that sometimes I can't tell when I've done too much until I 
am really exhausted. And it doesn't need to necessarily be named as a problem. It's just, it just is. This is a tendency, a trend, a pattern. Um, it's just probably there may be some like tendency. They, they may share that tendency. And the sooner that they like are aware that it's a thing, I think I think it might make it easier to to deal with, um, and 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 being light with it is okay too. I think um, like in uh, there's a My Little Pony character rarity um, uh, uh, for for for, uh, for um, for those who don't know, um, uh, Luna and I we sh we briefly shared a monotropic focus on My Little Ponies because I thought this was like the ultimate neurodiversity show. Um, like they're the, like all the all the cartoon pony characters are like caricatures of personality traits, and they all have conflicting access needs, and then they all have the power of connection and all this. Anyway, it's like. Anyway, um, there's a this character rarity is like her, she she's all about perfectionism, and so now we have a frame of reference external to us. Like Luna will say, like, well, it's not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I'll be like, I'll be like, okay, rarity, and like that just takes the edge off a little bit to make it to make it okay that we can get through this moment in a way that used to just sort of deteriorate to like chaos in a way that I absolutely relate to. Um, having spent most of my life needing things to be just so and feeling shame and frustration and all the things when it wasn't. Yeah, so Christina, Christina, that, that I, I think that is another, another part of this, that shame of, Oh no, I did it again. I did the yo-yo thing. Yes, yes, yes. Which is why I think going back to the concept that this is not linear. It's not like you're like, you reimagine, you like acquire intuition and you learn how to meet your access needs. And it's, 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 it's like, you're just hovering on the edge. And it's just like coming in and out and in and out. And, and there's going to be all kinds of breakdowns with other people and with yourself. And I think it's about, you know, like, uh, like, like, um, for those of you who don't know, actually, if, if, um, if Sarah or Lizzie could find this, it's the October 4th brain club with Hannah Bloom and linking to that. That's one of my favorite brain clubs of all time. Um, talking about kind of coming in and out of attunement and like the repair cycle after breakdowns and, and, and all of this, it's such, anyway, anything Hannah Bloom ever says is magic. So, um, so uh, what was I going to say about that? I mean, I may have just been talking about that Hannah Bloom's magic and that would be okay if that were my point, but I, I don't remember what my point was. Um, oh, the shame thing of like, there it goes again of, um, of, of like, yeah. So I, yeah, it's, 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 it's just the warning sign. It's like, oh yeah, I'm cold. My hands are red. Oh yeah. I've done too much. Um, it has been, you know, there, there are, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups on my desk right now that has crossed a threshold that it is, that it is time to scale back on the yo-yo. I just put it in the chat. Awesome. Thank you. Link. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Laura. So the yo-yo in our house is like keeping it reasonably hygienically clean, basically. Um, and like, we just, it's like, it gets super busy and things get chaotic. And then we play catch up for like six hours on a weekend to do all the laundry and all the dishes. And it's been sort of nightmarish. And so 
what we've been trying is like we made a list of everything that has to happen by we i and my husband help but we made a list of everything that has to get done in the week and then we like spread it out so it's a little on every day and what we're trying is like very planned and organized bite-sized pieces and it's been like a week and that's been a better plan than our like yo-yo of like all in all out all in all out in that way I love that. And um you're you're it's just I think the the con the main concept is like there's not a right way to do the thing. Um and and that's okay. It's about like and and, and I think any for any system, it's only gonna work for a certain amount of time. And it doesn't mean that you yo-yo all or nothing. It's just that like eh, that was expected. Systems when they lose novelty, they are no longer dopaminergic therefore they don't work um or 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 or, or sometimes it's um it's like it's 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 like harm reduction it's like well the toilet is chaos so maybe i'm gonna like I'm, i i don't have the spoons to like scrub but maybe the, the spoons to spray it's like the partial job is better than no job at all maybe i'm not gonna catch up loads of laundry but maybe i can do one you know like just just there's not one right way the one of my personal goals for brain club is about like creating space like space for people to to enter the conversation because sometimes the conversation goes really quickly and I have the kind of brain that does not feel time. So when I'm pausing, I feel like I'm waiting a half an hour, but it's really only been like five seconds. <laughs> uh, reading in the chat, it's my way of asking for help because typically my husband is willing to help, but doesn't know what things are weighing on me. So now it's hanging in the kitchen and he can help without the mental, mental energy of me having to think through what needs to be done. I mean, that is exactly what I meant with my slide before the video of, of like what, what, like reducing the barriers, you know, the activation energy or the executive functioning or whatever. I think that's a great, it's a great example. So it's interesting because next week we're going to apply this to, you know, it's, we called it reimagining education. Um, but I think it's, 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 it's really thinking about how do any of us learn new things at all ages? It's not like education, like the school system for kids. It's not what we meant by it. Um, I think it's just about like, like zooming out and saying, despite the brain rules of maybe how how I grew up thinking about how there's one there's like one way that this has to look because that starts early that starts so early and 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 I think going back and and like revisiting our own educational experiences as adults, I think makes it, it's like part of, I think the unlearning process, because if we don't remember that we were socialized a particular way, um, I think, I, 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 I think it's, it's easy to still believe it. Um, question. What's the question? Scrolling, scrolling. With a PDA help, does the list making make the child not do the thing? Well, I think that's a great question. So just like jargon busting. So PDA, pathological demand avoidance, which gets um, uh, a terrible term, but um, persistent drive for autonomy, basically a, a subtype of autism with uh, hypersensitive or extra sensitive neuroception, threat detection, um, uh, threat detection, the autonomic, uh, automatic, <laughs> Automa autonomic response to, to demands. So Christina is asking, is a list a demand? For some people, yeah. Um, for some people, even their own list 
is a demand. Uh, so, which is, which is, I think, uh, one of the reasons why executive functioning support systems, not only do they fail sometimes when novelty wears off, but the thing that exists to help and support can also at the very same time be the thing that stifles and constrains and like, how dare you notebook tell me how to spin? I mean, it's like irrational, but it doesn't, it's not supposed to be. It's the limbic system. It's not like it's it's not your thinking brain. So yeah, I think it, I think it depends um, for person to person and within a person. It's like internal conflicting access needs. Hi, Anna. Um, reading, reading in the chat. My husband tried to help me the other day by telling me all I, all I had to do was make a phone call and ask the question I was wondering. Right, so, you know, all I had to do, that's easy, that's simple. Like these are all like unhelpful because we all have different brains. Uh, Angie says, we are human beings, not human doings and this invalidating capitalist society does not help us take care of ourselves. Yes, David, did you have your hand up? Awesome. I'm just really loving all of this as I get more familiar with Brain Club and what you're doing. I just, you know, just simple things like over the new year, you know, the, the point is not to become our best selves in the new year, but to become our authentic selves. And that requires, you know, it's just, this is brilliant. And the, the not sort of being in charge here all the time, of course, gave me sh shudders as I think about the way I did my, was with my children sometimes. I was with a family over the holidays where the father would script everything the young daughter would was supposed to do. We would come in the door and he would call and say, um, David and Lori are here, come say hello to them. And she would appear, say, um, say, thank you for coming to see me. I, I've never seen anything quite right. It, the whole thing was scripted for her. And, and the only thing that made me feel a little better is that there was some part of her that I I think was really stepping back from this and realizing what was going on and sort of going through the motions, but not taking it too seriously. And that's my hope is that she wasn't being crushed by this. Um, I, I just do have a question on this whole parenting thing, and this came up with when I watched with terrific interest the discussion um, with with uh, Amanda Diekman. As I mean, are, do you find are there occasions with Luna? I mean, I understand the principle here is that there is so much ability to step back and and it's like finding the pivot of the Tao in sort of the Taoist tradition. You find the way to nudge something in a direction without having to push anybody around. But I mean, are there occasions with Luna, for example, where there's something you really know needs to be done for health or safety or whatever? She so really doesn't want to do it. And what do you do in those situations? Yeah, um, I think that I'm going to answer that in a couple of different ways. I'm going to answer like conceptually, and then I'm going to give an example that's happening literally right now, like right now. Um, so. It's about, I think, first, um, what is her, what is her capacity at the time that we're having the interaction? So I need to have a cortex to cortex interaction. Um, if either one of us are dysregulated, the whole bet is off. Um, so this happens like all the time. So um, she she actually thinks her medicine is helpful. Um, and I alluded to this in our, in, 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 in the, the video clip, but like this plays out like in sometimes kind of dramatic ways. So it's not about, I, if I say Luna medicine, I should never say it that way because it's predictable that that's, that's too much of a demand. Um, if when it's not medicine time, we have a conversation around like, all right, well, let's think about this. Like you're saying this you don't want to do this. Help me understand that. And what would make it easier? Hey, you know, I'm remembering before you started this medicine, this is the problem that you were experiencing. You were experiencing this problem that you don't have anymore. She's like, oh, and then for like a good three days, she was all about taking the medicine. But in the moment, like you do the thing becomes power over, not 
really about engagement and safety. Um, but there also might be something like, you know, it was, we, we call toenail clippings pedicures, like, you know, clipping with a kid's nail clipper, you know, um, uh, with like, you know, one foot on the bed and the other head upside down. Anyway, this is pedicure. Anyway, so Luna, it's time for pedicure. Now, um, well, like, you know, um, I noticed that this morning you scratched yourself when you, like, you, you kicked yourself with your own toenail and like, I think you're gonna be more comfortable now but then later on she like and I, I left the clipper and she's like yeah all right it's time like it's just it, she has to have access to her cortex because otherwise it just becomes like a battle of wills where i have in full transparency where i struggled the most is when it comes to interacting with other kids I can I can unlearn my brain rules around acting around adults. So if if an adult says hello goodbye and Luna doesn't like I'm not I used to totally be the parent say goodbye like I mean totally um, I didn't know it's what everybody does right so so anyway um, but um, uh, I with other kids I worry I worry and I think when I'm coming from a place of worry it makes it harder to be energetically neutral. So for example, I just received the feedback that there was an, a, I haven't fully processed it. Um, so there was, I would, it, the, 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 the feedback passed along was that there was a quote, unkind statement said to appear. And can we prepare for the next interaction? And uh, my first thought was, did that come from upstairs brain or downstairs brain? So my husband says, well, you're gonna deal with this, you know, cause you and your autonomy. So, uh, so, so I approached Luna and I said, hey, you know, I, I, and, and it was rushed because right before Blame Club. So, but my approach was going to be like, this thing got said and just stop and see what she said. Um, and that, like, it, like without a direct question, a command, uh, a shaming of like, you can't do that. Because I think that the, the description of it as an unkind thing is not, is, that's not what this is about. This is about conflicting access needs. You're dysregulated. You say something to another kid that ends up causing hurt feelings. It's conflicting access needs. It's not about that you're responsible for other people's feelings. It's about that in life, we don't violate other people's access needs. And if someone has an access need for belonging and we are showing up to this relationship, we have to kind of figure that out. So what was it that led to the dysregulation as opposed to like, you can't do the thing, say you're sorry, you know, like that just doesn't help. Right. As Sarah said, in the heat of the moment, but it's very, very hard. But I think even for young kids having a framework, much like you're saying you observe this family with the scripted kid and the, and, and the kid being able to zoom out and say like, this is a little ridiculous. Um, that, that I think is healthy to recognize other people's brain rules. Like it's not that they're necessarily bad rules, but probably this parent probably had the idea that they, it's important to them that their child is polite and there is one right way to be polite. And like, Anyway, so it's it's like zooming out from the actual events. And so in this instance with Luna, I think it'll be about, hey, I, I, I wonder what your access needs are in these social situations and what are some strategies to getting those access needs met so that you are having more more rewarding, fulfilling interactions where you're not getting, where you're not feeling dysregulated. You're not feeling dysregulated. 
I think part of it too, is like building up the bank of like, you know, what, what, cause when you have a child like that, like everything you ask them to do is a demand, you know, even something as simple as something that a lot of people wouldn't consider a demand feels like a demand to a child like that. And so, you know, I unschool, um, I have two kids, an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. And I feel like, you know, we, um, we give them a lot of freedom and a lot of leeway over decisions in their own lives. And like an example would be like, we were with grandparents and it was the last time we were going to see the grandparents before they were heading on a big trip and they're going to be gone for a few months. And, um, my eight-year-old was tired. It was the day after new year's Eve. He was tired. He wanted to stay up and watch the ball drop. And he was just like, not into the walk. And he was like, I'm done. And we were like, okay, you know, we can be done with a walk. That's fine. You know, but a lot of, I think like Laura was saying, if you push through and then experience dysregulation, that's not going to be fun for anyone. It's going to teach him that he has no ownership over his own life and um, cause that disconnection. And so having the opportunity to have ownership over decisions like as simple as I'm done with this walk, I wanna go just hang out in our vehicle and wait for everyone else, um, you know, means that when it is a health or safety issue, I do feel like I've built up that bank a little bit more. It's not to say that it's always easy. Sometimes it can become really hard and I have to be careful about how I energetically present myself around even health or safety things. But I feel like, you know, there's just more investment in the relationship and autonomy over their lives in other places. And that allows, um, it just allows for it to happen, I think, more easily than it would have if they had even more control over other parts of their life. Thank you, Sarah. I think that's true. I think it's not just regulation in the moment, it's like cumulative. So in, in Luna's instance, I, I, I am interested in what happened right before it was said, but I'm more also interested in what happened all day long. Um, because I think that, you know, it's, it's every regulation or dysregulation, what takes its toll on your nervous system is cumulative in a day and a week and a month and life cycle, you know, um, and, and, uh, Stacy's speaking of self-regulation, uh, Stacy sharing shameless plug for self reg by Stuart Shanker, one of my favorite books of all the books I've read so far in this vein. This one really opened my eyes to the self control, self regulation paradigm shift. Yeah, and you know it's written for parents and teachers, but I it's it's I learned so much about myself. This is like back when I thought I was like you know a neurotypical parent. I had a one year old. I read this book and I'm like, oh, you can like intentionally do things to feel calm what i didn't know this like anyway so so anyway i and, and also i will actually if you look on the all brains belong education site the family luncheon learns i gave a talk last year um like about about this book and it's recorded um it's it's um it's in the archives of the lunch and learn um i'll put that in the chat um, reading Suzanne's comment, I'm appreciating the empathy and grounded smarts coming from all and recognizing the need for attunement after a dysregulated state while remembering we can't be in attunement perfectly. Oh, what a beautiful note to wrap up on, right? It's all, it's every, everything is fluid. Yeah, it's Kelly said, we, what we do, we call fluid routine in our days. There's certain half dues and then everything else is your own time. We call it no demand time in my house. Um, yeah, I think it's like coming in and out of attunement, um, you know, with ourselves and with other people. So with that, thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Have a great week.